Hey guys, welcome back to Billy Ray Garage. Uh, just giving you a quick update on the car. Uh, the brakes are still being the brakes. <laughs> so, uh, I just had my dad here. We were trying to do a two-person bleed and put some pressure in the system. Seemed to work a little bit. I now have back brakes to a degree, but the pedal still goes to the floor a little bit. And the stupid brake alarm comes on, but if I pump the brake real quick, it goes away. So... We're getting somewhere and that dopey little brake light in the corner that goes away too so as i'm driving you're not getting a random brake alarm going off it's only when you step on the brakes but you step on the brakes lift up press again that goes away you have full brakes so i need to do an automated bleed which i have no time to do because i have to get the scanner from the mechanic that i know and they don't work weekends so that's a slight problem so with all the hurricanes going on, a bunch of our guys got sent down to assist. So the, we have my company sent 100 plus people down to North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida. So they are very busy and that means I am busy up here. So I'm working a lot of overtime and all that stuff. So time is very limited. One of the only things I have left to do on the GTO is the line lock. So I want my brakes fully functioning when I do that. I already have the fluid side done. I just got to do the wiring, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but I want my brakes functioning before I do that. Now as for everything else on the car, I've driven a couple hundred miles in this thing, probably well over 200 miles. No issues, no leaks. Things just putzing along fine. That is good news. Nothing funky going on in the suspension and everything seems to be holding up. So around the four or 500 up mile mark, then I'm going to lift the car up, torque everything down, make sure nothing came free and everything's good suspension wise. But anyway, let's go for a ride and get an honest opinion about how this thing's riding and proof that it's riding. Okay, so we're starting it up. As you can see, you got dopey little seatbelt guy. Let me make that go away. Okay, so seatbelt is on. As you can see, the brake light's there. E-brake is up. So as I put the e-brake down, that goes away. I got my foot on the pedal. I pumped it twice, and I have a good firm pedal. And as you will see, I will roll backwards and stop. Roll backwards and stop. So when I do that, the car, the brakes are fine, but it seems like when I'm driving, I guess when it's pulling more vacuum out of the intake, that's when it starts going to the floor. So let's go for a ride and have a little fun with this thing. All right, so when the car's in gear and moving, if you have it anywhere around 1,000 RPM, 900 RPM, you're just kind of putzing around, I guess because of the bigger cam, it does not like that. So, you know, keep that in mind. I gotta keep that in mind as I drive around. So let's see if I can get the brake alarm to come on. There it goes. But yeah, as soon as I pump the brake, it goes away. So let's get do a little rip here because we can. Suspension-wise, I think I got the coilovers right where I kind of want them. Uh, I adjusted them into their position that I think is good for the road. It's not too stiff, not too soft, but it's kind of a 
it's a little stiffer than the stock setup was so I can't really complain about that as I go through a little less turn here but it's still very very planted I, I don't know if that's because of the combination of the coilovers the strut tower brace and the subframe connectors but this thing's pretty not pretty solid it's very solid I'm sure if I dampen the uh, the coilovers down a little bit this thing will get a lot stiffer but there's a lot of uh, undulations in the road big word there and having it on the stiffest setting is probably not a great idea for my back and my joints because I am getting old and things hurt so. but these seats are cozy so that dams it a little bit Let's see if I can get back on a main road up here and uh, see if we get a little ripping action See, like I just hit the brakes normally driving and normally pressing on the brakes that alarm does not come up it's when like you have to stop suddenly that's when the pedal goes more to the floor I guess because more of the back brakes are involved I'm getting more used to the clutch pedal being ridiculously stiff it shifts a lot smoother it doesn't get hung up with this uh, tilting system so that is a plus traffic light stop here so we might be able to just do a little launch off the line make sure there's no cop behind me this thing's a little rocket ship man zero to 60 i don't know what the time is but that's basically the rip i just did it was a lot quicker than normal this thing is spicy man this thing is like the exhaust is so loud I'm very tempted to change it out just so that uh, cops can't chase me down. Well, not chase me down because I don't want to get any cops killed, so, or anybody killed for that matter. So, you know, if I'm fucking off and some cherries come out behind me, I'm chancing it. I'm just going to pull over. There's no point in ruining somebody else's family because of something stupid I did. So that's my PSA to you. I'm 41 years old, I'm not 25 anymore. Plus I have a lot of friends that are cops. I don't want to see them get involved in something like that. So oh, there's a Prius here. He wants to fucking cut me off. Get out of here, buddy. Township cops, county cops, yeah, everybody. Something's going on in the park. There's a lot of cool cars here. A lot of people. Oh, wow. There must have been a little car show here. Seems like a bunch of European cars. A lot of uh, Volkswagens, BMWs, random S2000s chilling in the park. Yeah, I don't know what was going on there, but they were doing something. 
a Toyota Prius freaking hanging out of my ass. Yeah, you get out of here, buddy. Got a Porsche, looks like a Macan behind me that's slammed to the ground. That thing's pretty cool. I love Porsche. My dream car is a Porsche GT4 because for some reason I just become infatuated with that car. I can't tell you why, but I will get one. Oh, I will. I will. It's going to take like two, three years, but I figure I can save up money, take a 401k loan, and get a hefty down payment on it. So basically, I'd be paying for like a $30,000 car at that point. Those are my initial plans. We'll see if they actually come to fruition. Let me get down here a little further because there's a lot of traffic because of that whole park thing that's going on. And we'll see if we get another rip going. Then we'll head back to my house and we'll end this video off. Oh, Porsche wants to play. Porsche's chilling behind me. I don't know how fast those Macans are, but I'm pretty sure they're turbo and freaking all that shit, so they're probably pretty spicy. Pump the brake once, I got my freaking thing going. Let's drop it in third, through the yield, and do a little ripsy doodle. Ah, goddammit, there's people at the church. There's probably a wedding going on. I don't want to creep people going to church, so. Or ruin somebody's wedding day. But it feels so great having this car back on the road. I am very happy that everything's working. Because I think I said it in a previous video that like I've done a lot of this stuff individually, but not all at once. Like like doing heads and cam on a car. Okay, I've done that before, but you know, taking the engine out and just replacing a whole bunch of other crap. You know, there, there's a lot of margin for error there because of you know you could miss something while you're doing something else. It's not like okay, the head is my main priority and. Meanwhile, ADD kicks in and you're like, ooh, squirrel, and you go do something else and you forget to do something. So, overall, I'm very happy with the vehicle. The gauges are working, oil pressure is good, battery voltage is good, the fuel gauge is working, RPMs are working, miles per hour are working, brakes are 50% working, maybe. So, yeah. All right, let's head home and finish this video off. All right, guys, back from our trip. It was a successful trip. I can't say that word today for some reason. But yeah, trip went well. Car's running fine. The clutch system's running fine. I cannot complain about that. So now let's get to the fun stuff. Uh, what's coming next? Uh, like I said, I still have the line lock to do. I just have to wire it up. I have old footage from when I put in the brake line part so I will tie that into that video when I wire it up there's not many places to put that uh, little toggle switch and the button for it so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it right in here I'm gonna put the toggle switch and the button like right here because there's really nowhere else to put it it should keep it safe especially a toggle switch because like, if you put your elbow here you don't have to worry about accidentally hitting it because it's elevated so there's plenty of room there so that is my idea for that. So I'm gonna get the line lock done and then I'm going to do a like action montage of this thing in action doing its thing. So that'll take a, that'll probably take a good weekend to make happen, but I want you guys to see this in the wild, not mounted to my e-brake handle while I have all the fun and I can hear all the cool sounds and see it doing its thing. So we will get that out. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for the support, the questions, the comments, the likes, and the interactions on the videos. I think I'm at 181 subscribers as of recording this right now, which is way more than I thought I would ever get on this. Like I, I thought if I got like 60, I'd be like insanely thrilled about that, but I friggin' tripled that. That's awesome. So I'm gonna try and get as much content on it as possible. But like I said, work is kind of, being a priority right now not by my choosing because of hurricanes and stuff and guys heading south so thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys in the next one deuces